Hey guys, it is Jacob here and since it is requested a lot on my YouTube and even on my streams I will show you my farming strategy that I had the most success with in this season it revolves around running maps basically running either deep space or near space I prefer deep space but do whichever you like more works in both uh, first thing that you want to get set up is get in your loot, fil loot filter so you can get different loot filters here in the filter menu so you go to the uh, flame filter hop to recommendations and even if you are not on EU or, and you are playing or, on NA or uh, Asia you can hop on EU server, uh, create a new character and find this filter here. Huh. I have no idea what it is called. I'm just using this one. How you can download it for NA, you open it. You download it to like your filters. Then you hop to my filters menu. You find it here. Open it. Click edit and click this this top, top right button copy code that copies the code then you go to your server well, where, where you are playing and in my filters menu you click create create from a shared code here you put the code here click confirm and the uh, filter gets added into your filters basically here and you can use it then so that's how you get a filter this one is the one that I am using pretty much everything that you pick up with this filter has a potential to have a value so you are not checking completely worthless items all the time uh, even the uniques that you get might be valuable because when you like recycle them you may get the materials for dream crafting which then may cost some money so yeah <coughs> that's for that part for pact spirits as you can see uh, the request was without pay to win pact spirits with free to play pact spirits i consider this being free to play and even if I would like to switch them to like some other drop pack spirits, I have none. I have literally no pack spirits. Yet I'm still able to farm in like a lot of FEs to create different builds for you guys. So <coughs> yeah. Uh, if you don't have Cloud Gutter, you basically you you basically should have Happy Chunky and Idling Weasel, the Sparkle one. So you can put Happy Chunky to the left or to the right and and Weasel to the left or to the right and leave the bottom side like without a Pact Spirit or put any Pact Spirit that, that you have on high level to increase the drop quantity on this. So if you don't have any Pact Spirit you can put uh, or if you have any Pact Spirit on level 6 and you don't have any like other drop, drop Pact Spirit that you could use you can pick any with level 6. Uh, that has level 6, like this slime, let's say. And if you put him to the bottom, he will boost the uh, bottom, like the biggest node, by 40% basically. Normally it is 10%. When you put like level 6 pack spirit there, it gets boosted to 14. It works the same with purple ones. If you have a purple one on level 4, um, no, it has to be level 6 as well. Yeah, so level 6 pack spirit to the bottom if you just have the two blue ones and you should be set. I will put the Happy Chunky back there because what Happy Chunky does, he provides you with additional flame field drop quantity. So that's why I use him. Cloud Gutterer, if you have him, use him. He provides you with additional flame fuel drop quantity. If you don't have him, yeah, you have to work with what you have, right? So you should at least have these two or... Well, if you get really unlucky, you don't have any. Then, yeah, 
you you are screwed. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, keep rolling. Pack spirit, you will get uh, pack spirit, you will get them eventually. So these are mine. These are definitely free to play, like acquirable. So yeah, pack spirits. Nothing special here from my side. Um, maybe the weasel there is there for the fluorescent memory drops. And the other tools are for flame fuel drops. That's it for packed spirits. For the card strategy, I'm running. Which maps to run? Either blister and lava or thunder wastes. Why those two? The reason would be uh, these like region drops, which this one drops emulating flames. Those go for er for around 400 when you drop them, but they drop really rarely. Or you can run Thunder Wastes, which those drop <coughs> Cocoon Flames, which you can then turn into Immolating Flames. So yeah, these two regions. And what I'm doing with those cards, I, I'm just holding them and I will create like, once I get enough, I will create another spark with them. That's how you can get yourself a spark as well <clears throat> for the card setup that would go like this uh, let's see the picture that I've prepared on, on my discord it would be this one so I'm running statue of might combining it with cube of rapacity and never ending dream basically to increase quantity throughout the map what you want to do throughout the map is get at least like tier one uh lightning ball before you like complete the might to increase your quantity from it uh why cube reason for cube here these are the compasses that i use like i'm forcing might cube and twin nightmare and for deep space I'm using the quantity compass for near space uh, the quantity compass has too high cost to be used here so instead of it on near space I use monster compasses so that's for that and I will show you like how the map goes since Rosa is a slower character uh, this strategy goes really well with her like she is not that zoomy like other ones need some netherrealm resonances I've prepared the Rosa for you again I'm leveling another character already so I had to swap gears and such so this would be this and you force those free and you put quantity since I'm on deep space I put quantity in um, the, when you are playing like slower characters like Rosa and Iris I was using, this, using the same strategy on Iris as well you use either might or machines those two like result in a lot of currency generation and I will show you what drops can you possibly get from the <coughs> from the mechanics. One, two, three, four. Confirm. One. So, why cube of rapacity? You are getting the invitation from it, which is going for. Hmm. I don't know where to find it actually. How is it called? Anyone knows? Well, yeah, the, the invitation for uh, the cube of rapacity boss basically, those are going for around 200 each and you like, you are able to drop like one or two per hour. And this is how you go. You just kill monsters and you want to start the dream well and try to get your blue like uh, 
lightning buff before you kill too many monsters because the blue lightning buff increases your quantity. <coughs> Shallow Dream talking from Nightmare, they are selling uh, pretty well, like 0.5 FEs each. And with Rosa, you basically can drag monsters around. I'm not dragging them around now because this is a boss and you cannot drag boss around. So I'm yeah, trying to stack up a bit and kill him. Now when he's dead, I can just keep rolling. And monsters will follow me around the map. That was the nightmare mist. I dropped a few FEs there. <coughs> and I have a might here and I will not start it unless I find lightning, which I found right now. It's a tier 2 lightning for 75 seconds. Doing the might will take you around 35 to 40 seconds. So you need to count with that. Uh, sometimes the might is uh, startable again after you finish it. So if that happens and you don't have like 40 seconds left on your lightning buff, I prefer to like look for another one or save a ball inside the circle like I do now. At least the small one, that's still something. <coughs> And you just clear it like this, you can go AFK doing that. And that's 16 FEs, that compass costs 10, so that's like 60% profit. Sometimes you get you get 50, sometimes I even managed to get 100 from that, so yeah. The more you can run, the better. And this is how you go if you don't have to wait for monsters to spawn. So, starting the map costs around 100 FEs on deep space, which might seem like a lot, but when you run enough of them, uh, you will eventually get the like jackpot cards. <laughs> Not meaning the emulating flame, that, but the jackpot chaos cards, which I will show which one you are looking for after I roll this. <laughs> Sometimes you get corners, which sell for a lot from cube, but the like most reliable source of FEs from cube are those invitations. So in this map, I've I've gotten around well, 60 FEs pure and around 120 netherrealm resonances which you can sell after one stack of casting which is sells for one fe is really fast so that's one fe here as well these sell for around three or four stacks for stacks of flame sense sell for five now uh, stacks of truth embers sell for like 15 <coughs> so yeah that's that. What about the corner? It's like 19 FEs maybe. Depends if it sells. This is 9, so yeah. That's what that was nothing special, but when you run it long enough, you will get uh, like chaos cards like chaos cards like this with the additional chests. Those are worth running on deep space. <laughs> And cards that you are looking for on deep space are this that converts non-legendary gear to flame fuels. You will you like should get a lot of flame flame elementium from these. Then you are looking for chests and uh, quantity. And if you have no other choice, then uh, <coughs> the progression cards are also worth running. And if there are like f these flame synth cards or netherrealm or uh, energy cores and there's nothing better, run, run those. And this one is also great because truth embers sell for like 15 FEs per stack. 
but the jackpot cards would be uh, this that converts uh, non-legendary gear to flame elementium with the 4% one you can get around 400 FEs from the map on deep space then uh, obviously uh, this one you can get even 1000 FEs from a map when you hit that one on deep space then these corner ones are great because you are running a, a cube on your cards so you have multiple desire incarn incarnations on the map so you get like you get at least four uh, legendary divinity slates from a map but you might even get lucky and get like five or six de desire incarnations on the map then you get a lot of corners uh, these are great because those guarantee you get in the um, might to be startable again basically and also when you get any of those mechanic ones when you get might or cube or if you have no other choice and you get the nightmare you can save the compass and you can put a different compass on that map when you are running it so that's 10 FEs less of a cost on the, on the start of the map and now for the cards that you don't want to run on deep space you never want to run this that's a pure bait like never run this that's six maps lost for five FEs that's never worth it and this one on deep space is never worth it either on near space well you might consider running this on near space but never run it on deep space uh, that's a bait like 14 FEs for six maps you're basically trade you are basically in deep space you are basically trading 600 FEs for 14 guaranteed it's not worth it you you're bet you are better running with any two star card and fish for the jackpot ones <coughs> and yeah that's for the chaos deck i think that i've mentioned everything i've showed you the map run yeah rosa is slow when you have faster character you can go faster for the possible swap for uh, god of machines you would just swap these five cards for god of machines and for god of machines to get like like really quick maps you want to get basically all one two three four five six cards here and you have only five might cards here so for machines i would drop zeal and get all six of these cards why i don't like running machines rosa cannot run machines because when you are moving monsters around uh, the machine basically eventually get instantly killed by, by no reason and it also can happen when you freeze monsters a lot so yeah that's that's why i don't i don't like machines because it's inconsistent the machine basically gets killed with no reason occasionally and i don't that's a disappointment and i don't like being disappointed in map so might is guaranteed profit uh, with a tips on how to survive might with rosa it's really easy you just spin to win and like regenerate your energy shield through your blocking but if you are not playing rosa and you play like iris or some other build if you have a lot of cooldown you can use a setup like this with uh, force start and activation medium energy shield and defense layers if you get the, the force start cooldown low enough to around the one second of the energy shield then you have like never ending energy shield regen and with uplifting the regen like is higher and if if that is not enough you can pair that with frost shield to reduce the fire damage taken and on builds like yuga you can use techniques like this armor when reaping energy shield starts charging Im immediately 
and you pair that with this point here energy shield charge cannot be interrupted by damage for one second after it starts so that also provides you with never ending energy shield charge re energy shield charge region so yeah that's that if you are dying with yuga uh, you can swap this for frost shield and you should be completely okay during the might so those would be the tips for how to survive it that is my strategy that made me that basically equipped me with three different characters and i'm still i'm still using it and i'm still going to be using it so yeah that's it thank you guys for watching see you in the next video